Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, along with my wonderful wife, Janet, and we are streaming live from the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Studio today. And today we are going to, we don't have a guest. So um, we are going to be talking about progesterone. Um, I really enjoy when I get to, I love having guests, but sometimes we, when we don't have a guest, it's nice because we can um, talk about subjects that are near and dear to our heart. And as you listeners and viewers might know, Jen and I are specialists and experts in hormone replacement, and we um, take care of patients all over the nation when it comes to hormone replacement and talk to doctors and patients about it all day long. So it is definitely a passion of ours. And we think that um, many people can benefit from it. So and we've seen thousands of lives change because of it. So we're going to be talking about progesterone today, which is sometimes I call a forgotten hormone um, because it is so underutilized and not talked about much in pharmacy school or medical school. So that's why some patients don't know about it and never heard about it unless they do some of their own research on progesterone. So um, with that, Janet, I would like to start with you introducing progesterone. When you think of progesterone, what do you think about? Well, the first thing that we usually say, Sean and I say, is that what it stands for is progestation, just like it sounds. It's for gestation, so for pregnancy. Um, but I, I need to back up slightly because Sean talked a little bit about researching progesterone. And this is a subject that um, I talk to very regularly with clients because a lot of patients these days are doing their own research. And so um, we need to make sure that you know the difference between progesterone and progestin. They are really different molecules. And hormones are molecules in our body that deliver a message to the tissue to tell the body to do a certain type of function. And the biggest difference between a progestin and progesterone is a progestin is usually um, for birth control. So one of the most common ones out there is Provera. Provera actually could cause an abortive effect on a, a baby or a pregnancy. So even though they might be close in the molecular uh, molecule, if you look at it chemically, they are distinctly different and send completely different messages in our body. So beware if you're doing your own research to make sure that you're not lumping them in the same basket because they are totally different hormones. Something somebody gets wrong all the time. Most pharmacists don't understand that at all. Uh, most doctors don't understand it. Most OB gynecologists don't understand that. And they will say, well, progestin, medroxyprogesterone acetate specifically, which is generic Provera, like Janet talked about, it's close to progesterone. Sure, it's close. But if you take medroxyprogesterone acetate, it'll prevent pregnancy, whereas progesterone helps to support pregnancy. So just because something is close in molecular structure does not mean that it's going to be do the same in the body. And what are some of those things that progesterone does that the progestins don't? Um, well, it not only helps support a pregnancy, but other things like helps to, it's a neural hormone. So it helps to um, induce sleep. So women typically that have low progesterone, um, especially postmenopause or peri premenopause, they will have problems with insomnia or problems sleeping. Um, oral progesterone is great to remedy that problem. What else? PMS, premenstrual sy syndrome, before menopause. Um, many women during their cycles will have problems with PMS. Um, and I see it over and over again. Anytime there is cycling issues, progesterone, progesterone, progesterone. How many women have cyclical migraines, migraine headaches that follow their cycles? Guess what, people? That is a red flag that that is a cycling hormone issue. You don't need some fancy neurological drug to stop those headaches. S fix the problem. Don't just treat the symptom. I have seen many women that have went to special neurologists and had all kinds of MRIs, CT scans, everything done on their bodies and their heads to find out why they're having migraines when in reality it was just they needed progesterone. Jan, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, so one of the, the I guess, standards of treatment for um, 
PMS is to put a lady on a uh, birth control pill, which it's fine, I guess, if that's the goal that you have is to prevent pregnancy. But a lot of times um, we're aggravating an underlying issue. And one could be the migraines, but it also could be, you know, um, confounding the problem because the reason the cycles are off is because the balance of the hormones is off. Um, we need to balance estrogen with progesterone and progesterone plays a nice role in our cycle. Um, usually the first part of the cycle, it's disappeared. That's when we're having our menses. And then it slowly builds up towards the end. And if we become pregnant anywhere in that, that part of the cycle, it helps to maintain that pregnancy. But while we're cycling, if we don't have that balance, then we start leading to other problems. And you get ladies that might have polycystic ovaries, they might have migraines. So we're not, we're putting a bandaid on the, the problem when we're giving them birth control pills. Typically in our traditional healthcare system, and I was just talking to a lady last week about this, and this is kind of her experience. Typically what happens is if you're having any kind of hormone issues, any kind of cycling issues, irregular cycles, no cycles, if you're less than 40, they give you birth control pills. If you're over 40, they give you a hysterectomy. I mean, how many times I've seen that happen over time and time again, it happens all the time. In reality, a lot of, most of the time, the first hormone to start causing issues when you have any kind of cycling issue um, is progesterone. But what do we typically do? What do we typically do? After hysterectomy, we don't give progesterone. We give estrogen only, usually. And, you know, we think of women, we think estrogen, estrogen, estrogen. But progesterone is so important um, that it be given along with estrogen. What it brings me to in my brain is that when I'm counseling women, we always think about hormones as treating our our sexual organs and, and our cycles, but they have other functions. Like Sean already touched on one, balancing progesterone helps with our sleep and anxiety. Um, but there's other things that these hormones do for our body. And it doesn't matter how old we are, we all as humans have bones. And progesterone gives the body the signal to actually develop and make new bone cells. So we sell ourselves short when we are just saying, okay, let's let's just give this lady this, let's give her a hysterectomy, and then we give her maybe some estrogen to get through it. But throughout this whole time, from the time she's, you know, born till she dies, she has bones in her body and those bones need to be replaced. And it's unfortunate, but once we get to the age where we do fall and break bones, if you fall and break a hip, it's, it's a game changer in your lifestyle. So while we are young and we are laying down our bones in our twenties and thirties, we want to get that right because we ha should have the most bones while we are in our thirties. Um, good news though, um, we, we can improve our bone health. There's many things that we can do with that. But the reason I'm talking about that is because even if you aren't having cycling problems at this point, you could have low progesterone. And if your progesterone's low, odds are you're not taking care of your bones. And the bones are dynamic Right. A dynamic organ. I mean, our skeletal system is a it is an organ and it's a, it's a system where it's dynamic. So you're always building new bone and breaking right. down old bone. That's that's very, very important. And estrogen, um, you know, which I was taught in pharmacy school, it's like estrogen is good for bone health. So and it is. But here's the reality. Estrogen does not build new bone. No. It helps prevention of breakdown of, of bone. So, but it doesn't build new bone, but guess what? Progesterone does build new bone. So that's why it's important to have both of them. Estrogen and progesterone are made in the body together. I think they should be given together because they, they do different, very different functions. And it's almost like they are opposite of each other in a lot of things. So estrogen decreases bone um, loss, but in uh, progesterone increases bone growth. So they're made to go together. It's important that you have new, the new bone gets built and the old bone gets turned over. And that's why estrogen and progesterone need to be given together. So when we talk about hormone replacement, often it's talked about, well, 
I should only be on hormones for five years. That's what my doctor told me. So he took me off of it. And then all of a sudden I had hot flashes. I couldn't sleep anymore. I had night sweats. And of course my bone density goes down and I, you know, I'm depressed, all these kind of things that are related to, um, less than optimal hormones. How long should somebody go on hormone replacement? So I personally, for me and myself, um, already know that I am at risk for for bone loss. I already have checked that. I've improved that. Um, and so I know I'm going to live with bones. My heritage and my genetics show that I'm going to be around for a long time. So I'm going to, I'm going to take charge of my bone health. Obviously there's other things. It's just part of the picture. Um, weight bearing exercises, eating properly, sleeping properly, um, and balancing hormones is, is part of it. Um, but what I did is I went in the last time I had my checkup and, and did an, a urine test that's called a NYX test. And really all they do at, in this test is you utilize how much calcium is being excreted through your kidneys. So it's really fast and it can tell me whether I am holding on to my bone or if I'm losing my bone. And that's empowering because I can make a difference now when I'm in my early 50s so if I do fall and slip when I'm in my 80s, that I don't shatter my bones. And that's without taking pharmaceuticals. This is just replacing what my body normally made, my ovaries were able to make. And so my answer to this is I'm going to be taking progesterone indefinitely. Well, and I, I think that I know we're focusing mostly on progesterone on this episode, but let's just remember that there are many things that our body does that um we need hormones for right. and so if you keep have if you have bones and you have many different kinds of tissues that hormones are good for whether it be skin whether it be vaginal health right. um whether it be your brain you'll be on hormones i know that sounds crazy to some because we've heard so much that oh you shouldn't be on hormones for any longer than five years because it's dangerous but so what do we do with a gal that has weak bones and we take her off hormones? Well, we have a class of drugs that we give them and I'll just throw out a brand name because people might be familiar with Flossamax. But the way these drugs work is they actually, they maintain the bone that's there, but the bone becomes brittle. And the reason it becomes brittle is because no new bone cells are being laid down and made. So we actually make it more of a, if somebody does fall as we age, it becomes more of a shatter versus a break. I personally don't want my bone shattered. I would rather a break because a break can heal. A shatter is, is a game changer. And, you know, if you, if you really want to, to follow up on this on yourself, ask your dentist. A dentist will not pull someone's tooth if, if they are on that particular type of drug because it will shatter jaw bones. So they've, they, they screen people to make sure that they aren't going to pull a tooth on somebody that's on a drug like Fosamax for that reason. Because if you pull a tooth and you're shattering your jaw, then that's not a good thing for the dentist to be, be doing. So there's different forms. Uh, sometimes it's once a week, sometimes it's once a month. And I think they have some IV forms that they give people too. And so if this is something you're on, you know, you might want to think about it because the long-term side effect of having bones that are shattered versus breaking is very scary to me. Um, I know that, um, we can do other things. Um, Obviously, we can, you know, give calcium. We talk about that. But I think laying down new bone cells biologically makes more sense. Well, and here's one of the things. So um, when we talk about when we talk about um, how long should somebody be on hormones, this is what I say. Well, how long would they put you on that drug for your bones? For the rest of my life. Exactly. So why should it be any different? How long do they put you on an antidepressant? Many times for the rest of your life. Why do you need an antidepressant? A lot of times when women need antidepressants, it's right during menopause. And what is lacking? And you talk to those women, it's like, well, when did this start? Well, my cycles became irregular about, you know, three years ago. So they put me on Prozac. I mean, bingo, red flag. 
cycle issues, that's a progesterone issue, that's a hormone issue, you don't lack Prozac. You know, subtle changes in hormones, I know that counselors look at this too, and they have for a long time, that balancing hormones make a di big difference in our mental health. And when we're talking about sleep, if you have progesterone on board, then someone is going to stay in their sleep patterns longer. And that, in, that brings you to the point where if you're sleeping better, your mental health is going to be better and then you make better choices. And so for, for many people, we have seen um, with other hormone imbalances sometimes, um, but we see significant changes in how they feel, how they interact with people. Because if you can't sleep and you aren't getting the right kind of rest that your body needs and you're always fe feeling anxious, it's not good. And then you start putting somebody on an antidepressant. And I'm not saying that they aren't good tools if they are used properly, but I don't think everybody needs to be on an antidepressant. I think sometimes we overlook what's the underlying problem here and where is this person in, in their stage of life. Um, and balancing hormones make a big difference. And even if you do need to have an antidepressant, still balance the hormones. Don't overlook that. Right. So we do have a question from um, Barb Dermarest on Facebook, I believe. And she has a question. What doctor do you, what doctor do we see who will know about this? Janet, you want to answer that question? Yes, I do. Um, so it depends on the, the community that you live in. Um, we work with a lot of, of private practicing doctors that, for example, have the direct primary uh, model. Um, naturopaths are great if you can get a hold of one of them. And then also any kind of um, doctor that's working uh, alone. In our own community, we work a lot with Tamara Nolan with Choice Health and Wellness. In the Wenatchee area, there's several. I think uh, we have Pacific Northwest, and that's with uh, uh, Carl Lambert. And then we have Dr. Hoey, who has his own practice, and he's a, a naturopath in that community. But there's others out there. I can't think of who's all in the Tri-Cities because that's a big market. But we have people in Spokane, too. So if um, you have a certain area that I haven't spoke of, you can always call our pharmacy and we can give you a lead. Yeah, that's the best. So, Barb, if you will message me and tell me where you are located, I will let you know. We have doctors we work with all over the nation that specialize in hormones. And we really, we really recommend that you go to a doctor that specializes in hormones because not only you get better care, but um, it'll be usually um, better care, but also it'll be usually quicker care. And we won't have to educate them because they will already know about it. Um, but if there is a doctor that would like to know more about it, please let us know because we can educate that doctor also. We, we slightly talked about uh, gestation and, and the hormone being important for pregnancy. And um, many times we uh, see some of our providers working with women for fertility issues. And one of the big problems with fertility is the lack of progesterone because many times um, a young lady can get pregnant but she may have difficulty maintaining that pregnancy. And a lot of times it's low progesterone in the first trimesters. Yeah. And that one, that's near and dear to my heart because I will tell you, Jan and I have at least a half a dozen stories that I can think of where a woman was trying to get pregnant and she would have either a hard time getting pregnant. And remember, progesterone is in the last half of the cycle in the luteal phase when progesterone should be high. That would make it hard to get pregnant. Um, or she was having problems with miscarriages, which the um, when you do get pregnant, you produce a lot of pro progesterone. You should produce a lot of progesterone to maintain that pregnancy. So progesterone is very, very important for that issue. I will tell you that I have we have seen and worked with women that have seen specialists in, in the Seattle area for infertility and spent tens of thousands of dollars. This is no kidding. And they never check their progesterone level. They come to us, they talk to us, we send them to a doctor that specializes in progesterone or in hormones. They prescribe progesterone and they are pregnant within two months for less than a hundred dollar drug. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, and it's sad actually. So that's one of the reasons that 
um, we want to do these educational series is because we want to educate and empower individuals that you need to take charge of your own health and you need to do your own research. And that's part of why we do these podcasts is to educate and empower you, the listeners and viewers. Many times um, we touched on it with the cycle. Um, we'll have women that aren't cycling at all. And so they end in, in this um, crazy place of of having not enough progesterone, they're storing fat, they're uncomfortable. When they do have a period, it's, it's excessive. And um, then we have fibroids that start happening or cysts that start happening. And usually that speaks to an unbalance between the estrogen in their body and the progesterone. And there again, the solution is usually very easy. It's balancing that hormone of estrogen with progesterone. And it can be very life-changing because a lot of times these women suffer. They either have difficulty maintaining pregnancies, staying um, uh, un uh, uncomfortable uh, cycles, uh, things like that. Yeah. So anytime there's a cycling issue, just like Janice says, um, it, you know, think about progesterone. And there are many... And it's not just about storing progesterone fat sometimes where, where women don't have cycles. There are certain times where women don't have cycles because they actually have too little fat. So um, high caliber athletes, high caliber um, athlete, women athletes, yeah. they will, um, you know, lack cycles because they, um, they their body just doesn't have enough fat to store any kind of hormones. So when it comes to your hormones, I suggest this. If you are on any kind of estrogen, I suggest that you should be on some kind of progesterone. Long-term, I do not believe in estrogen alone. Progesterone should be given along with estrogen. One of the roles of balancing progesterone with estrogen is, one, it helps with the amount of fluids that we maintain. It kind of opposes estrogen in that way. It also... Um, doesn't allow the the lining in and our um our body to overgrow so you don't have those heavy menses and periods um so you know there's a lot of a lot of benefits to the endometrium tissue itself that you know you don't have overgrowth um you have less likelihood to have cystic uh, formations or fibroids and fibroids are not always fun some people don't even know they have them but they can be a problem and if you think about how many women have went down the road of having a hysterectomy when really we could have stopped the physiological problem that her body was not producing enough uh, progesterone. And there's many, many stories. I mean, I'm, I know we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but there's many stories of women who, once they've had a baby, have had issues. And a lot of times the issue can be solved by um, progesterone. And it can be things of just their cycles are off. It can be that they're mentally feeling blue. Um, they might have some postpartum issues and progesterone gets overlooked at, at those sites too. While we're talking about fibroids and, and the uterus or the endometrium, um, which, you know, estrogen increases, thickens the endometrium. Um, it's kind of like fertilizer on the lawn for a simple analogy. It's kind of like fertilizer on the lawn. Progesterone is like the lawnmower. It thins that endometrium and it kind of gets rid of the weeds. So, the important thing, when you have uterine fibroids, you don't necessarily need a hysterectomy. Very commonly, women will get hysterectomies because they had a uterine fibroid or because they had endometriosis. Well, endometriosis is really the endometrium thickening from too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. So I will tell you that I have seen many women that they've been said that they needed, my wife was one of them. She had uterine fibroids. And when she was having surgery on her, on our second son, when she had a C-section, they want to do a hysterectomy. Of course, I told them, no, I do not want you to do a hysterectomy. And we ended up giving her progesterone and the uterine fibroids went away. Now, how many women unnecessarily had a hysterectomy? And you can argue that, well, you know, they kept my ovaries. So my, oh, you know, everything was still in balance, but there's been a lot of research to show that just taking out your uterus also can make, can create some hormone imbalances. And I just think if we can keep our body parts, we should keep our body parts. So, um, you know, realize that those things, whether it be uterine fibroids or endometriosis can be 
a hormone imbalance. So you might not need a hysterectomy. I would rethink that. So we love talking about hormones. Jen, I do it all day long with um, patients and, and healthcare professionals all over the nation. And it's really a passion of ours because it has, we have seen, we have helped thousands of people with hormone imbalance. And it is just so, so rewarding. I often, I often tell people, um, and Jen, I talk about all the time that we love what we do so much. We're never going to retire. It's almost hard to believe that we can make a living doing this because we love it so much. It's, we feel it's our purpose and it's our passion, and we love to educate you, the listeners and the viewers. So if you have any questions, please comment on my personal Facebook page or the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Facebook page. We are also streaming live on the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy YouTube site for people that don't have Facebook. And so you can get a hold of us there. Also, I do personally answer all those questions. If I don't, you can always message me and I will get to those. So um, I thank you for watching and tuning in today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, our goal as always at Health Solutions has been to educate and empower others to take charge of their own health. And hormone balance is a very, very important issue and part of the and, and a part of the puzzle. So, you know, don't forget about that. And if you have any questions, you can always call our pharmacy also because Janet um, will be available for you. 509-764-2314, uh, Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy. So thanks for tuning in. Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you. Thank you.